Hey everyone, Tom here, and if you've been on the internet recently, you've probably seen the Hackaday article explaining why there are two different filament standards. There is 1.75 and 3mm filament, and some printers use one and some use the other, and there isn't really one size that's better than the others. There's excellent printers available in any size. Um, but in this video, I'm going to show you how to easily convert your 3mm printer to 1.75. I personally use 1.75 simply because it seems to be more popular overall. There is a much broader selection in 1.75mm filament where I live and also it it just seems like every product I'm seeing is made for 1.75mm. So the only thing you really need to buy as a new thing is a hot end that is suitable for 1.75mm filament. Um, as far as tools go, you'll need a 4mm drill and a few tools to disassemble your extruder and hot end assembly, which usually include a 3mm and 2.5mm hex key and a 13mm wrench. You will also need a bit of PTFE tubing of the 4mm kind, which is the standard Bowden tubing for 1.75mm extruders. So I'm going to show you this process on the Lulzbot Mini, which has, again, a relatively standard Greg's weight extruder. And to get started, we'll need to get at the two M4 screws that are holding the entire hot end and extruder assembly to the X carriage. Now you can get to the left screw relatively easily, but the right one is obstructed by a cooling fan and a bit of wiring, so you'll have to take that off as well. In the little spots case, all the other wiring, like um, the wiring for the hot end fan, that was all zip tied and, and routed in there as well. So everything had to come off of the carriage. Now for your specific printer, this assembly might look a bit different. For example, the hot end might be secured into the extruder block with two screws from the side. So go ahead and remove those if that's the way your printer is assembled. And now that that's out, there's one more thing we'll have to remove and that's the hopped bolt assembly. So usually there is just a single lock nut on the opposing side of the main drive gear. There might also be two jammed nuts in there. So just remove both of those and to actually get the gear and the hop bolt out um, because this actually uses the herringbone gears you'll have to also loosen up the motor a bit um, just to give the gearing a bit of extra wiggle room i also decided to completely remove the motor just to you know make working on it a bit easier so this right here is the filament path that we'll want to line with the four millimeter teflon bowden tube so grab your drilling tool with the 4mm drill bit and just shove it in there. It's usually pretty close to 4mm already. Um, this one was almost the exact perfect size, but um, just to, to ream it out and to make fitting the Bowden tube a bit easier, you should still make sure that it's a smooth bore. So the way you want to install the Teflon tube is that it guides the filament as closely as possible to the hopped bolt without colliding or rubbing on the um, idler bearing or the hopped bolt. And also grab some filament to visualize the filament path for you. And one thing you can already check for here is that the idler lever doesn't actually collide with the main extruder body. So go ahead, insert that filament, press it down with your fingers and see if it actually closes far enough to effectively press the filament against the hopped bolt. So this right here is basically how you want to get the Teflon tubing in there. Um, of course, you'll also have to double check the length of the entire thing. Uh, in my case, that was about five millimeters or so too long. So I ended up cutting the um, tapered end again. So the way you want to cut the Teflon tube is with a very sharp knife. Definitely don't use any sort of cutter that's just going to squash your tube and that's not what you want to happen. So all you have to do is make one 45 degree cut and then take off the tip of that by about a millimeter or so to keep it from rubbing against the hopped bolt. So once you've found a position for the Teflon tubing that is just about right, that doesn't have too much or too little clearance, 
you can go ahead and swap out the hard end. Now I'd recommend using the exact same type of hard end that you had in there before just as a 1.75 millimeter version. That way you won't have to redo any wiring like I'm doing right there or fiddle with the firmware too much to adjust the axes length or just end swap settings or anything like that. So in my case, I'm swapping out the world spot specific hexagon hardened with the Prometheus, which share the same thermistor, but use different voltages, for example, for the fan. So it's a bit more work than just a one-to-one -one, um, wire rerouting. So now that the hardened is all wired in, we can go ahead and reassemble the entire thing. So as you're assembling the hopped bolt and the big drive gear, make sure the hopped area and the Teflon tubing actually lines up. Then go ahead and tighten the M8 bolt on the back, making sure that you don't squeeze the bearings down too much so that they actually have a resistance. They should be still running relatively lightly. And also reinstall the motor again, making sure that you get the tension against the big drive gear correct. Since I decided on installing a hot end that was very different to the one that was in there before, I had to slightly deform the fan shroud to get that back in there. So overall, pretty successful, I guess. The wiring looks okay and the filament fits in pretty much perfectly. So there's one more thing left for you to do and that is to change the diameter in your slicer. In my case, I also had to modify the firmware a bit since the Prometheus hot end is a bit longer than the hexagon. But other than maybe the retract and temperature settings in your slicer, you shouldn't have to change anything else. So that's it for this guide. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, feel free to leave me a like, subscribe and do whatever else you want to do. If you didn't, leave me a comment on what I can improve on for the next one. And as always, thanks for watching and bye bye.